I'm here at my neighbor's house. Well, he has taken his lawnmower apart to define how easy it is to take off the deck and sharpen your blades. I believe that right there is where we caught that steel rod in the yard. You've got a kind of a mirrored spot. Right that here. would probably be. Yep. That was uh, when the wife took her out and went pod racing with it. Mm. Um, and we, I, I found the steel rod later and it had been cut at almost a 45 degree angle. Took the, the corner right out of the rod. So being that I don't have a vice, I'm gonna take this right here. Actually, I'll do it like this. So pretty simple, just enough to hold the blade steady while you hit it. And uh, what I do is I start, I grind into the, into the, uh, blade and I start up high and then roll that angle down to match the face of the, uh, the edge. All right. You don't want to start low otherwise you'll round off your your edge. It will come just like this and it's going to spray out that way. All right. So, see, I'm not pushing hard on that at all. Right. Uh, you don't want to take off any more material than you have to because you get out of balance. Spin that around and touch up the face of this one and then you flip it over and just make sure that there's no rolled over material on it. Because if you go down this way, I've seen a lot of guys do that, it'll take that metal and just curl it over on the back side. It's okay to leave it kind of jagged like that, huh? Unless you take off a lot of material, there's no real way to keep factory angle right. without pulling that edge way back. So you'll take that and flip it over, and this I will actually be going away from it. So on this side, you're not actually digging into it very much, you're keeping it mostly flat. I'm sure there's some master sharpener out there that have better lessons than I would, but... I'm also not pinching it much. Whenever you have your rays facing down, if you pinch that down real hard, it's you'll gonna get warp a, your blade. Get a wobble. It's gonna warp your blade. I figured out that using a strap for these arms, whenever you take the, the deck out, these arms fall down. So you actually have to uh, secure these up, otherwise when you're trying to slide the deck back under, it's mm -hmm. just going to be in the way. Inside and your, your uh, three quarter for the top side. You take these, make sure that your curve is faced up into the deck. There are no pins in the hub, no holes in the blade to hold it. It's something especially hard. The blade would more quickly bend yeah. uh, or stop. And as the, opposed to as shear. As opposed to shearing a pin and bending the blade. But it seems like it's less less solid at first until you think about what happens when a very hard object finds your blade. And as always, when you put blades on a mower, you want to make sure that that insane tiny little amount of space between the blades is still a space and none of them touch. Touching blades is a uh, mower that's not going to run very long. Or something, placing a block of wood here doesn't damage your blade and it'll break it break it loose real easy. Uh, 118 foot pounds of torque. I don't know if that's 118 foot pounds, but it felt like about half my body weight, so we'll go with that. Back it, make sure nothing touches, nothing's wobbling. You can look at the plane where they're spinning and see if anything is uh, dancing up and down. You don't want that. All right, now the blades are on. And again, these are very easy to use. I mean, they I have ran this mower like crazy, a uh, full bore across a rough yard, jerking the thing all over the place, and these never came out. This never came off and dropped the deck. As I let this off, these arms that are falling down right there, that is what we were supposed to be holding out of the way. Yep. There we go. Got her in. You look for that little hole. And now you're good. And though this deck floats around, it will float up and down as you go over stuff and the anti-style wheels uh, catch the ground. I'm guessing that these are mainly structural support. So that when you hit stuff, it has a good solid anchor. So now that we have all of that in place, we're going to go ahead and put the belt back in. This is going to come around like this, right in there, and the other side will go the other direction. There we go. 
go. Right here like that. Through there. And this is where having your tensioner pulley off is vital. Does see that slide back? Yeah. Now I can. This has a map for the belt. Make sure I got it right. Yep. Right here is your tensioner. This is your drive. It goes inside, around the outside, around the outside, and this is, uh, I guess, just so that this another is tensioner. Well, it's it holds tension for sure. Gotcha. But I think this guides it around here so that this enters this pulley at a lower angle, so you have more surface contact. I'm gonna grab some pliers. I don't have a hook small enough to do this, though they work better. So you'll just hook on to your tensioner, pull it forward like that. Make sure that this is set in place. I'm going to loop this one upside down. That'll make this one over here right side up. I think that'll make it easier to put on. There we go. Just like that. And that'll keep tension on the belt. So we've got all the pins in place. The only thing we lack is put our covers back on. I'm actually just being goofy. A little cut out, a little cut out here. That's uh -huh. that, that pulley back there. Don't fit too good when you try to put the shoe on the wrong That, and I'll grab my impact real quick. I use a quarter inch impact for all kinds of stuff. If you're the type of folk that can't control that trigger finger, I do not suggest tightening anything down on the plastic with an impact. 